Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold is also one of the great poems from the Victorian era. And you can see Matthew Arnold here. He's a very extremely handsome fellow, I'm sure. And this poem is a poem most people would say he wrote on his honeymoon. And he was he, he visited uh, Dover Beach, which is in England. It's on the eastern side. This is the place where they have um, very large cliffs. You've probably heard the Cliffs of Dover. Um, just really, really vertical, large, looming, intense cliffs. And he's he's at a at a hotel, and he's kind of peering down and he can he can hear the ocean and he can hear the waves crashing on the shore and um, and he this is this is what he comes up with this is his poem he says the sea is calm tonight the tide is full the moon lies fair upon the straits on the French coast the light gleams and is gone. The cliffs of England stand glimmering and vast out in the tranquil bay. Come to the window, sweet is the night air, only from the long line of spray where the sea meets the moon-blanched land. Listen, you hear the grating roar of pebbles which the waves draw back and fling at their return up the high strand begin and cease and then again begin with tremulous cadence slow and bring the eternal note of sadness in Sophocles long ago heard it on the Aegean and it brought into his mind the turbid ebb and flow of human misery we find also in the sound a thought hearing it by this distant northern sea the sea of faith was once too at the full and round earth's shore lay like the folds of a bright girdle furled but now I only hear its melancholy, long, withdrawing roar, retreating to the breath of the night wind, down the vast edges drear and naked shingles of the world. Ah, uh, love, let us be true to one another, for the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams, so various, so beautiful, so new, hath really neither joy, nor love, nor light, nor certitude, nor peace, nor help for pain. And we are here as on a darkling plain, swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight, where ignorant armies clash by night. The poem may not be a a traditional type of Victorian poem. In fact, I think it prefigures modernism. And what we need to know about modernism is it was this time of great loss of faith, just like he says. And it doesn't have to be religious faith. It can be faith in one another, faith in humanity, faith in progress, faith in technology faith in ourselves and in modernism there is this idea that there that that, that the world is uncertain and it, I, I would say that Darwin's origin of species was uh, it appeared it was published in 1859 uh, Matthew Arnold's poem was uh, published in 1867 the world was moving into this industrial sort of uh, paradigm this this time where you were cranking out more and more and more products and machinery was taking over this is the beginning of technology this is the world of steam engines mm. here here he is on his honeymoon looking out over the over the uh, English Channel and 
he realizes these things. And I think above all he realizes that the that the world the the world view this this um this image of the universe that the romantics fed us this world of perfection this platonic world where where everything makes sense and is tied up perfectly with with nice little knots for us to understand and 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 everything fits together it's a perfect puzzle nature is divine nature will 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 uh will show us the way uh, as plato has this realm of perfect ideals the world is this perfection for these romantics and i think this is what he realizes he says that that world that world that they showed us that they fed us is a lie our world is fragmented it's uncertain it is it, it's it's lacking continuity in so many ways in fact as he says in the end here our world it, it it lays before us so beautifully we think it's so beautiful and wonderful but it hath neither joy nor love nor light nor certitude nor peace nor help for pain and then this is his real triumph his his famous lines he says and we are here in this world as on a darkling plain swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight where ignorant armies clash by night most people think that this is a reference to an actual battle that occurred um, in antiquity where where the armies it was it was night they could not see each other and they were fighting and it ended up that they were killing each other they were killing their own men um, and that's like what maybe Arnold f felt our world our society is coming to rather than a sea of faith being full you can think of it as religious faith or you can think of it as faith in humanity like I said faith in each other we used to have that but now I think he would say that we are like those confused armies on that plane hacking away at each other in this confused struggle to where to where we kill each other the poem is wonderfully full of imagery we have auditory and visual imagery all the way through we have the the French coast gleaming you can almost see it the cliffs of England stand glimmering you can you can see these white cliffs towering into the sky and glimmering at night but what we hear is this grating roar these are this is negative this is a grating roar and these are the pebbles which the waves draw back and you can see in the image I have here that the these are sh they call the English term for this is shingles they're they're pebbles and these waves are drawing them back and forth flinging them up onto the shore and then grating them against each other and then flinging them back again and he says it tr it brings in the eternal note of sadness and then he evokes the the m memory the uh allu the illusion of sophocles sophocles was a was a writer a a uh, writer of tragedy he wrote antigone king oedipus uh, electra he wrote tragic plays and uh, he, he says Sophocles must have heard that same sound on the Aegean back in antiquity and uh, and thought these same thoughts and so he says now all we see is the sea of faith used to be full but now it's retreating you can almost see the ocean sucking back and just is retreating away from us um, and now all we hear is this melancholy long roar and there's more just just auditory imagery there as the as the sea of faith retreats from us and then we have the the night wind the vast edges drear and the naked shingles of the world so when the sea retreats the shingles are naked and exposed we might think of ourselves as those shingles were all one of those little pebbles and when the sea of faith is sucked away by whatever whatever 
impetus, whatever causes it, whether it's lack of spirituality, whether it's te the technological revolution, whether it's just some, some loss of faith in, in one another. But when it retreats, we are left exposed. We're naked. And, and then begins this struggle and this fight where, where we destroy one another.